Good morning, one and all present here. As we continue our exploration of sustainable solutions in civil engineering through interdisciplinary collaborations, I extend a very warm welcome to all of you for the second day conference of International Conference on Interdisciplinary Approaches in Civil Engineering for Sustainable Development. I extend a very hearty welcome to Professor N. Vinod Chandramanan, International Coordinator, G20-C20 Working Group on Sustainable and Resilient Communities, Climate, Environment and Net Zero Targets, Founder Member, NDMA, Government of India and our Honourable Chair for IACESD 2023. I also extend a very warm welcome to all the respective keynote uh, speakers, you are welcome to the day two. I also extend a warm welcome to Dr. K. Gopalakrishna, Principal, Jyoti Institute of Technology. A very warm welcome to every participant present here. Welcome. All the faculties, teaching and non-teaching, and the students of JIT. I hope you enjoy the sessions and make the most of it. I hand over the mic to Ms. Usha to start the keynote session one. Thank you. Thank you, Bhargavi. I, Usha, Department of English, take immense pleasure to introduce Ms. P. Binisha, Executive Director of International Institute of Waste Management for the first keynote session titled Circular Economy in Metal Recycling at the IACEST 2023. At the outset, Ms. Benisha's accomplishments speaks volumes, but due to time constraint, we'll keep it brief. She's an environmental scientist with 23 years broad-based experience in the field of environmental management. Her specialization includes urban and rural environment management with innovative technologies implementation. She has executed more than 150 projects related to waste management, hazardous waste, biomedical waste, e-waste, and, uh, and domestic solid waste. Ma'am, the list is endless. She has worked on projects of World Bank, UNDP, UNIDO, CIDA, SDC, etc. Ms. Benisha has undertaken study visits to more than 35 countries in Europe, Australia, and Asia. Ms. Benisha is the board member of Technology Development Board, Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India, since November 2018, and chairperson of the DRC of TDB of the same board. She is a member of the AICT's Ministry of HRD Green Campus Committee. She is also the jury of Smart and Clean Campus Program and Leelawati Awards of AICT. Ms. Binisha is one of the expert resource persons at International Center for Environment Audit and Sustainable Development of the Comptroller and Audit General of India. She is one of the expert members of the Panel for Selection of Appropriate Technology for Waste Dump Site Reclamation formed under the principal scientific advisor to the Prime Minister's office. She has been involved in training and capacity building activities and has been the chief trainer for several programs. She has trained more than 500 pollution control board officials across the country and almost 1,500 industrial personnel spanning her entire career. She has, sunk, sorry, she has successfully completed the World Health Organization's response to COVID-19 courses, a set of 10 courses, and obtained the record of achievement with the highest scores in the test. I think she deserves an applause here. She was conferred with the Women Achiever for the year 2014 by the Garden City Group of Institutions. She has several scientific papers to her credit, including Best Paper Award in International Conference on Emerging Trends in Engineering and Technology for her paper on Utilization of Construction Waste in Sewage Department. Ma'am, we are indeed fortunate to have you and look forward for your session. 
a humble request to all the keynote speakers to restrict their presentation to 20 to 25 minutes only. Over to Ms. Benisha. Good morning, everybody. I um, Actually, the CV which was read is slightly old. I'm 27 years now in the field of waste management. So uh, there are other things which have added up, uh, which gained a little more experience. In fact, now I'm working on circular economy, which is what I would be uh, mainly touching upon in this uh, presentation. Um, yeah, I think uh, most of you would have already heard a lot about um, climate change and also on the uh, sustainability issues uh, uh, since yesterday. Uh, today I would touch upon the circular economy in metal recycling because I thought it is always better to give some examples which will be uh, a better uh, understanding of the subject rather than going into the entire broad uh, concept. So, um, first of all, before uh, dwelling into this particular topic, I would like all of you to look at three different pictures which I'm uh, showing here. This is the temperature of our Earth. Uh, from 1980, I mean 1880 to 2021. Uh, so this is in uh, this scenario was in 1882. If you look at the zero uh, level, which means it is about um, uh, what we say is about 16 degrees is the average temperature of the Earth. Uh, so those during 1882, if you look at all the uh, nations, you would hardly see a few of them which have passed or it is at least touching plus one of that. Now if you look at the next one, sorry, 1980, then you see that most of them are kind of touching that plus one. But if you look here, 2021, which is just two years before uh, and if you look at it, you see the contrast and where we are heading to. And here, it is not like the humans, you know, when we talk about humans are doing this, it's we who have contributed to this. Because each one of us here have contributed to this scenario here of the earth and we are heading to disaster. I don't want to start off on a negative note, but what I'm saying is, why I want you to look at this is, this is the, we are heading towards a major disaster and this is the right time to actually make the changes and we cannot wait longer. And circular economy or um, the recycling, secondary usage, these are, these will definitely contribute a long way in reducing the temperature or at least to, you know, not increase it. Yeah, I am, I'm sure most of you know why this 1.5 degree centigrade, what are the impacts it is having. Uh, this would have been uh, dealt yesterday. I'm not going into details. But let's look at the relationship of climate change and recycling. This is why I wanted to uh, show you these uh, those three scenarios. See now, like all of us have a budget, our country has, our state has, even your uh, institution also has a fixed budget. And um, here, if we talk about Earth's budget, it is a carbon budget. And we are running out of our carbon budget very fast. And how fast it is, it's, we, are, we only have six years and 100 days left to reaching the global warming of 1.5 degrees centigrade and all those impacts which uh, is uh, talked about for on climate change. 70% of this global greenhouse gas emissions are related to material handling and use. And that is the relationship between the recycling and why we should go for recycling and the climate change uh, context. To bring this 1.5 degree centigrade pathway, countries should reduce 
resource extraction because we know mining and other things should be as minimal as possible and use 20 at least 28 percent which will enable reduction of 39 percent of GHG and that's quite a lot so this this is the reason why we are saying that circular economy is one of the key parts required to tackle climate change now my presentation I have outlined it like this first of all um, I was under the impression that there must have been somebody who uh, did talk about circular economy but I got to know that uh, this was not dealt so I'm just giving you a short introduction on that um, then the metal consumption with respect to construction industry why I have taken construction industry is this is one of the most booming sector this is something which touches each one of us so we understand it better so metal in terms of construction industry then need for secondary steel or recycled steel and India's policies to encourage circular economy so that's a very positive note which I want to end the presentation okay now to what is circular economy if you look at the circular diagram I mean this is the reason why it is called circular economy um, the linear economy is you start consuming things take it from the earth take it from the atmosphere um, uh, you know all kinds of resources and then consume it and then whatever is used even energy everything and then finally it gets wasted you dump it in a landfill or you burn it in an incinerator and there it ends so that's a linear economy whereas what we need to change and what is the new philosophy in waste management is the circular economy where you have resource extraction and then the material and the product is designed and here in the design itself you do it in such a way that it can be recovered just to give you one example you um, and all of you would have read in the papers about uh, the new charges in, of the mobiles and uh, you know the uh, uh, the cables uh, we have now a universal cable uh, do you know why we have it as universal cable this is part of the designing yeah uh, it is mainly because you can use it for any kind of mobiles so when you change your mobile you don't have to buy an extra cable and if you have two different mobiles or in your house if there are four mobiles you don't have to have different different cables for every uh, mobile and everything will be the same so for this since 2002 we have been advocating and finally now world over they have changed it and this is a uh, good breakthrough which has come otherwise imagine the number of cables each of you are having at home and the metals which are there in it the either it is uh, the uh, uh, I mean steel or sorry here it is aluminium or copper whatever now these kind of things you will reduce because otherwise it will it has to be again recycled a lot of energy a lot of resources wasted for not only from the mining but also during the making of it the manufacturing of it and then it come you are consuming it that is where you have the use of it so there itself there are many things which you can adopt and then there is a question of recovery of it other than in the linear economy it goes to the landfills or the incinerator here you can have a re-engineering and recover it and very very minimal will go into the waste so this is called the circular economy so finally now that's the uh, uh, broad version uh, of it but under each of these itself you can bring it back like if you're going to reuse and repurpose then what happens is again there is a lesser uh, resource used there is lesser energy being used if you are going to do remanufacturing of course you need to transport and then again it has to go into energy needs to be used and sometimes a little more uh, resource and then it can be remanufactured which is also good but if you look at the path again it's a little longer path the longer path means longer energy longer resource used 
then you have the recycling which is also a better uh, possibility and you bring back the material because you are still not extracting the resource from the earth and the best way would be again a shorter path but a metal completely recovering the materials and then going into the uh, product design so this is called the circular economy now world over everybody has to follow this because otherwise we are not going to uh, i mean come uh, to the net zero now what in terms of waste management this circular economy principle has to be used along with this inverted triangle which is a principle which we call as the waste management hierarchy because prevention is the best thing to do but we can't go back to hunter gatherer stage right we we have to be in the development mode so uh, but still there are so many things which we can prevent and that's like how i was ta talking to you about the cables itself then we can reduce the use because for example the clothes which we are using so most of the time you know unnecessarily we will buy it so those kind of things there are many things in our day to day life which we can reduce then the next best option would be to reuse the thing like give it to somebody else in your own family or to another uh, uh, person who needs it finally if all these are not possible then go for recycling the worst would be and recovery is the next best option because still you can't you have to use a lot of energy there the last option which is if everything is exhausted only then go for disposal so if you use this principle to the circular economy then the circular economy is the best way to follow okay um now coming back to the sdg goals of uh, circular economy especially when you talk about the sdg goal of uh, responsible consumption and production that is where the metal recycling is can be best explained and um, i would like to use this particular uh, uh, you know the thought which is burn by and beyond now all of you would be going back into the construction industry or into uh, an industry or also maybe as decision makers always think of these three b's because what happens is first of all the consumption of resources and energy when you are manufacturing or when you are utilizing a uh, uh, substance in your uh, uh, sector so that is the burning because there you burn so as much as possible reduce that uh, burning of energy and resources the next one especially if you talk about construction industry use of um, uh, you know steel bars which are uh, which is definitely needed but how best you can make that the uh, emissions are reduced use uh, renewable energy um, and have very less wastage so uh, have circular economy within the industry and then manufacture it the next one is if you are making the same steel bar it is not enough that you take care of only your industry because you also have to see that to make this you are transporting you are purchasing the bars uh, from the uh, tmt uh, manufacturer i mean there i was talking about the uh, consumption in the construction industry here then uh, they also consume the resources the last one is beyond which means it is the mining of the iron ore and then the disposal of the wastes which are there so which is the indirect uh, emissions so you have to look at the entire life cycle of emissions and consumptions of resources when you are looking at a circular economy so that's why we call it as burn by and beyond um construction industry and the steel consumption this is the crux of my presentation if you see uh, why we have to concentrate on this construction industry ranks third among the 14 major sectors in terms of direct indirect and also induced effect which means the impact um, in the sector of economy and uh, especially india which we are now soon going to be a fight trillion economy 
um, we have to consider construction and also because the population of our country is also huge and we have to consume, we have to have homes. So if you um, uh, look at the uh, number of houses that is needed for our country, currently only three houses are built per thousand people per year, which is compared to the required five houses which are needed. So which means there is a big gap and our economy is booming. That means all these constructions will also start happening very fast. So that's why the entire world is concentrating on India and Indian economy. So that's why the construction, uh, which means about 10 million units of households, we need to uh, you know, build in our country. And that means India will consume. It is currently also the second largest amount of metal, especially steel, in the world in this sector. And it will soon surpass even China. Because there, there is, uh, they are already reaching saturation. So we need to really look at this sector. And if you see the graph there, I mean, uh, the share of steel uh, demand in the construction industry, 35 to 40 percent is the steel demand for uh, our, our country. And uh, this is just increasing manifold. Now. If you look at recycling steel sector for achieving net zero, this is another aspect. Approximately 7% of the greenhouse gas emissions come from the steel produced due to primary route. Now, this is why, you know, there is a lot of demand for steel. And if we think of getting everything from the primary sector, that is by mining, then uh, we will just keep consuming and it's going to be a disaster in terms of uh, climate change. However, there is a silver line for this because we can use the secondary route because steel is a, or any kind of metal is, is an item which can be recycled umpteen times and there won't be any change in the properties. Whereas if you are talking about plastics and all that, maximum three times or four times is what you can recycle. After that, you cannot recycle it. And it has to go into either landfills or burn. So this is one, one material which can be used for infinite use. And that is why construction industry should always go for secondary. And no change in the quality will also be there. And if you see why it is so, by 2050, the CO2 emissions due to primary steel is Go, I mean, production is almost 300 million tons at the current rate of emissions. And it would become 540 million tons of CO2 um, by uh, 2050. So reducing this carbon footprint using the recycled steel, why it is so is because this entire 50 million tons per annum, we can actually do it only by secondary steel. And that's possible. Only thing is the route of taking it from the construction demolition or from whatever consumptions which we are doing, like our vehicles or at home, whatever appliances we are using, that's the white goods and all that, wherever we are using steel, that needs to be brought back and it has to get recycled. Now, that root of how we will manage with the least emission is what needs to be really looked at. So that is why we are saying that this to reach the net zero, it is very well possible by using only the steel, um, I mean, uh, secondary steel. Now, if you look at also the, I mean, recycled steel availability from building industry and the offset, if you see by 2070, this CO2 savings in terms of million tons, if you can see how when it comes to the primary production and the emissions, it's one of the best methods to really use. Yeah, now coming to um, GUI's uh, policy, um, we have path A, path B and path C, which uh, like I told you about the burn uh, by and uh, uh, you know beyond. All the three pathways have been recognized. There's a Niti Aayog report 
each of the line ministries responsible have also been roped in and they have all been given targets. We have several policies also. There are, I also work with MRAI, that's the Material Recycling Association of India. And um, they have been uh, formed in, uh, they are one of the, uh, the knowledge partners of uh, the government. And especially in Maharashtra, we are also planning to have a recycling park because that's, that's the way forward. And um, most of the states are looking at this option now. So uh, this recycling industry is going to get a, it's going to be a booming industry very soon. So if we look at today, how IT is going to be there, tomorrow it is going to be recycling industry. That's what is the prediction. The Ministry of Steel has come out with policies. There is a steel scrap policy. They have also set a target of net zero in 2070 and um, encouraging circular economy parks. There are some policies which even the state governments have formed. Policies to enable urban mining. Um, that's the Mohua, uh, which is the Ministry of uh, Housing and also the uh, urban development. Um, the Ministry of um, Environment and Forests. So all these ministries are working towards this. So landfills which are already there, they're trying to do the urban mining and take out the recyclables, the resources. Metal is another important sector. The country is, that's the future oil. So we need to really hoard the metals in our country. So that's why a lot of research is also going on as to how to do a complete recovery from the materials which are already there, that is from the products. And uh, e-waste is one of the major uh, sector because uh, lithium, indium, these are things which are not even available in our country. And we need to really, uh, you know, uh, try and uh, take it out from the urban mining, which is from the um, uh, products which have already been put out. We have also the life mission, which our uh, government, in fact, it's a pet project of uh, the prime minister because we, it's not enough that these are done by industries or by the ministry. Each one of us also are part of it. And how we help in the changing our lifestyle so that the consumption is minimal and also make sure that things are segregated at home and then given to the recycling uh, industry. That's an, a big mode, which is a mission mode in which the government is now going ahead. So with that positive note, I think I will end my presentation. In case there is any questions, I can take it now or I don't know, how is it? Thank you. Yeah. See, all ferrous, non-ferrous, it is the best for recycling. However, even for other sectors, like if you're looking at uh, construction, demolition waste, um, wood, everything what is there, except maybe bricks and all that, currently we don't have any process of, maybe we can just reuse by cutting it and all that. But otherwise, uh, making M sand from the, the demolition waste, uh, that is also being done. In fact, even in Bangalore, we have a center. Um, then plastics, um, we have, uh, plastics is another, I mean, it, it's a necessity that we really take that out and, um, you know, bring it back into the system. Uh, so almost everything can be recycled, but there is a big cost to it. Uh, whereas for steel and other things, the cost is also lower. I mean, lower in the sense as compared to the primary uh, sector. So uh, for certain things, you need to pump in money to bring that out. Certain things like e-waste, um, because all uh, recovery of uh, precious metals and other things is very profitable. So that is why they pay you to get your waste. Whereas plastic, nobody will pay you. You have to pay to get rid of it. So everything depends on that. So if you are doing something where you have to pay to get rid of it, that means the recycling value is lower. Whereas when there is a value to it, they pay and get things out of it. That's... Yes. 
Yeah, six years and under. Um, yeah, the countries are moving towards it, and that is why there is uh, today every sector, anywhere you go, any kind of conference. I'm not talking about the sustainability conference. Even if it is a complete manufacturing or any sector you go, you always have one, at least one slide of every presentation which touches the climate change or world over. So carbon footprint is now ingrained in everybody's mind. So I think that's, that's a very good, uh, because at least awareness is there and there are targets set. So hopefully we can achieve. <laughs> Yes, EPR I did not touch, that's a good question. Um, in fact, those are incentives which the government is giving um, so that, uh, you know, at least that encourages people to, uh, you know, give back and, uh, uh, you know, helps in recycling also. So um, the producer, whoever is producing, they have to contribute fra from their profits some amount for recycling or for even uh, you know recovery of the material but circular economy goes one step beyond that is they themselves have to use it so now there are targets like steel if they are every steel industry or any any sector which is making steel they have to have minimum of 15 percent which is secondary steel so like this for everything they have given now even plastic products so they say you have to use so much of secondary uh, recovered product. So th that is a target which is quite good. And for that also EPR helps. I would like to ask two questions. Yes. I want to finish your question. The, f the, f the first question is about uh, uh, the 1880 to 2021, the way in which uh, temperature has been changing. Yeah. You have talked about uh, the situation around the world. Yeah. And if you really look at 2021, and now we are in 2023, yeah. uh, you see that the heat wave is happening not only in Asian countries, it's yeah. also happening in Europe, Europe, it's happening in many countries. Yeah. So I think uh, the 2023 situation may be much worse. Definitely. Lots yeah. of more brown and more red. Yeah. You know, no, that's why, no, I just put those two which are close to each other, but just between 1992 and uh, 21, you can see the drastic change. And now even if you take within two years, it's again worse. Now, just la uh, four days back, we saw that earth, the temperatures across the earth temperature, it went up almost by one degree. And on that particular day, which which was which is very very alarming, and um, there were many uh, newspapers which reported it, but there are uh, scientists who have mentioned that if the two three days of that happens, it's going to be really really bad. And we have been seeing it. See, these are not predictions because we are seeing the kind of climate change we are uh, I mean the kind of floods which are happening then Europe and all that they can they are not used to that kind of temperature at all and yes. what is the kind of yeah change? just as a follow-up because uh, you are the executive director of the International Institute of uh, Waste Management circular economy in the context of solid waste management yeah what is your suggestion about uh, the landfills and uh, solid waste management in many cities around yeah. the country because we see in spite of the Swachhada mission and others we are right. still seeing a lot of waste all around you know when you're traveling within the country that's true so yeah. is uh, what is your solution to solid waste management in yeah. urban centers see um, there are technologies now and especially if you're talking in terms of Indian context because I was telling you 27 years I've been working and I've seen the evolution and one positive thing is a lot of technology interventions have come in. Awareness has definitely increased. And there are things which are happening. But there is a little more effort which everybody has to put in. And here what happens is it's not like, you know, an industry or a sector where you can have policies and immediately you can bring in change. But here it is behavioral change which also needs to be brought in. And that is why it is taking a little longer time. 
and um, it's not enough that you are aware now it's almost everybody is aware but that little extra effort to make sure that we are segregating and it's not enough that we segregate we also have to make sure that our ulbs our panchayats wherever we are living they also do their jobs properly so we have to be a little more vigilant and um, the uh, unless that is there it is we will not achieve this because technologies definitely are there the infrastructures are also there in most of the cities and even two tier cities today but things are not really happening because there are lacks and there are um, you know small things which are like uh, which needs to be again taken care of i don't want to say i mean of course there is a, there is corruption there is uh, you know even negligence so for which I, every individual should really think of it just one small suggestion uh, since uh, you are here and you are also associated with the the principal scientific advisor's office uh, as an advisor uh, i would request you to take some time to visit circ in jyoti institute of technology and dr gopal krishna the principal and uh, dr venkatesh who is the director of the circ because they have a lot of uh, startup uh, innovation yeah. and innovations which are Good. really world class and very promising right. it will be an encouragement to crc yeah. and jyoti institute thanks for pointing this because the answer to your previous question also lies in each one of us having some kind of innovation and entrepreneurship in waste management this is one sector which is uh, which will really give you a lot of Uh, opportunities to take up your own uh, entrepreneurship uh, and here it is not like there are no uh, you know entry barriers because in many uh, entrepreneurship of waste management there is a uh, lower uh, initial income uh, i mean the capital investment is also low and the profits are much higher competition is less and there is abundant opportunity because there are more than uh, you know 4000 ulbs which are there so everywhere they require something or the other so that is why i was telling you that this is one sector which is going to boom and uh, if you start right now then you will be you will have a big head start and not many big industry in this sector is also there in the country and we are heavily depending on the uh, municipalities or the public sector and it's that's why it is more like a service oriented from that service mode if it goes into profit mode and if it enters the um, you know entrepreneurship mode then we will see a big change in the sector and uh, for that it is all you have to do it because you have the opportunity thank you thank you for pointing that thanks Yes. So nowadays we are making four lane to six lane and like that two lane to four lane. Right. So this bituminous uh, uh, and uh, concrete aggregates so, aggregates lots two, lots yeah. of these things uh, we are demolishing and keeping outside. So these waste uh, management of these material is big. being a big uh, right. challenge yeah if we utilize some papers uh, are there to I utilize know. but it is not mandatory That's like true. nowadays uh, we are using this ponders and flyers it is become mandatory yeah. by the government so please see how we can make it mandatory to re- reuse of this demolished material which can be recycled True. like uh, these things uh, can be made and converted into aggregate sand and used yeah. and whatever wrap material is there bituminous material is there that also can be used uh, in yeah. again so that recycled uh, procedures are there yeah. and we can use this plastic and waste material like that to improve our road quality also yeah. but it is not being utilized uh, means uh, promptly or we can say whatever we have to utilize so 
change is not being made yeah um, yes. in fact now there is also guidelines um, which uh, for the construction of roads to utilize um, from construction demolition waste yeah. the uh, aggregates that is for lining under uh, the bituminous liner so, so uh, that has already come in and there are standards and there are many highways which are already using it so uh, you, you can actually go to the nhai website they have uh, given those criteria also yeah i am so, working for the, nhai yeah i so, am working for nhai but yeah. people who are engineer or authority right. even utilizing of recycled steel material which properties are same, same. as primary but they are not allowing yeah actually that there. is that is what now there is this policy and we have an akam uh, drive which is happening in the country where what you are talking about using steel both in uh, railways and that secondary steel yeah. in railways and in nhai uh, is being talked about so i think they have already uh, sent out the drafts and it's waiting for the final approval so yeah. once that is done then there will not be any change in primary and uh, secondary Second. people participating in the tenders of the government so but otherwise there are tmt and other things in the other sector it is still it is used now i mean it's uh, especially because it's cost effective so everywhere else it is being used but when it comes to these major sectors uh this um, this clause used to be there in the tenders yeah. which now is being removed is going to be removed very fast yes thank you thank you any student no questions from the students yeah. <laughs> okay thank you thank you thank you binisha the session was very effective lots of food for thought we are also humbled by the responses and thank you for an active participation our heartfelt thanks to miss binisha for sparing her precious time to share the key message among guest us i request dr vishwanath hod department of chemistry to felicitate miss binisha on behalf of jyoti institute of technology I also request our beloved principal to join Vishwanath sir. thank you madam thank you all